In this video, we are going to use the same guess and check strategy that we were using in our notable. Um, we are going to make charts for all these problems to guess some answers and then check our answers to see if we got them correct. So, we're on page 33 and in every slide the number will be up in red so you know you need to be on that page for your worksheet. Um, okay. So we're on page 33, we're looking at number one. It says, use the guess and check strategy to solve each problem. One, number three. So you know it's gonna be something about numbers. A number cubed is 1,728. What is the number? Okay, so again, we wanna make a chart. So, so here's my chart, and I'm probably gonna make the charts using the tools of the smart board because my answers obviously are not straight or my lines obviously are not straight. So a number cubed is 1,728. Cubed means three. We wanna keep that in mind, three. So in this column, we're gonna times the number twice by each other. And then in this column, we are going to times it again by that number. And then in this column, we're going to check if it's 1,200, or sorry, 1,728. So what's the first number that I wanna guess? Well. I would say 10, but I know 10 cubed is 1,000, so I'm going to go ahead and try the number 11. So in this column, I'm going to times 11 by 11, and I know that that equals 121. So in this column, like I said, I'm going to times this total by that same number again, 11. So 121 times 11. Now I don't know what that is off the top of my head, so over here I'm going to do some work. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 1 is 1. I need to put my placeholder there, and I get 1, 1. So I get 1,031, which I know is 2. So that means I'm going to pick the next number up. Let me change my color so we don't get confused. I'm going to change it to purple. I like purple. So I'm going to try 12. 12 times 12, again, we know is 144. Now, in this column, I'm going to take my total, 144, and I'm going to times it again by 12 to get that cubed. Right? We got 1, 12, 2, 12, 3, 12. Now, what does that equal? Again, off the top of my head, so I'm going to work. 140 times 4 is 8, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2. Placeholder, and I just basically write 144. Now I add 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, oh, and I get 1,728. So I know that's right on the spot. That's right what I need, 1,728. So what's the answer? Well, they're asking what is the number that's cubed at 1,728. Well, that answer is 12. And I want to make sure I mark 12 with a circle or a box or maybe just box this whole thing here. I know that you know that this is the right answer. So now we're looking at the second one on this worksheet and it says money. So again, we know it's going to be something about money. Jackson has exactly $43. He has $43 in ones, fives, and $10 bills. So there's no $20 bills. If he has eight bills, how many of each bill does he have? And again, we are going to make a chart. Okay, so this time you'll notice our chart has four columns. In this first column, we're going to put one, the amount of dollar bills. In the second column, we're going to put the amount of five dollar bills. Third column, we're going to put the amount of ten dollar bills. And of course, the fourth column is going to be our total which we want to be $43. Now we want to make sure that this column plus this column plus this column equals how many bills? That is going to equal eight bills. So we want to just keep that in mind. So here we go. Let's try maybe three $1 bills. So we're going to say three times one. We're going to add that to, I don't know, maybe two $5 bills. And how many bills do we have left? That would mean there's three $10 bills. So does that equal um, $43? So three times one is three, plus two times five is 10, plus three times 10 
is 30 and oh right off the bat we have $43 we know that that is our right amount well that was a lucky guess um, so we know how if he has eight bills how many of each bill does he have well he has three one dollar bills he has two five dollar bills and he has three ten dollar bills so we want to make sure we rewrite our answer so um, Jackson has three one dollar bills um, five, oh no, two five dollar bills excuse this handwriting and three ten dollar bills and we're done yay alright so on to number three again we're on page 33 of our worksheets it says Jonah is thinking of two numbers one number is 18 more than twice another number the sum of the numbers is 48 what two numbers is Jonah thinking of so we know because we've been working with expressions that 18 more than twice the other number really just translates to 18 remember more than twice a number we're just gonna call that number X in this now remember this is just one of the numbers the other number is the sum of this number plus the other number and that's going to equal 48 now once we make our chart maybe it'll make more sense so we have our first we're going to call this our first number column. Maybe I'll just try and draw the chart this time. Um, the second number. Oh, why did I put a money sign there? Hang on a second. Okay, so I gave up on the drawing the chart. So the first number is going to go in this column. The second number is going to go in this column. And remember, the second number is 18 more than twice the first number. So we'll call this number X. Now the sum of these two numbers, which means, remember, addition is, so sum is 48. So let's see, if the first number, we'll try 2, the first number is 2, that would make the second number 18 plus 2 times 2, which would be 4 plus 18, which would be 22. And the sum of 2 and 22 goes in this column, so 2 plus 22. Does that equal 48? No, that equals 24. So this is too low. We're going to put a low arrow. So let's try another number. Let's try maybe 4. If the first number is 4, remember that's x. We're going to stick x in right here. So we'll say, okay, 18 plus 2 times 4, what does that equal? 18, that's 8 plus 18, that's 26. Is that right? Yeah. So the second number is 26 if the first number is 4. Does 4 plus 26 equal 48? No, it equals 30. Again, we are too low. Well, let's try doubling it again. So why don't we try 8. Now 18 plus 2 times 8. If our first number is 8, our second number is 18 plus 2 times 8. So that would be 16 plus 18. 16 plus 18 is going to give us 26. That will give us 34. Now does 8, remember our first number is 8, plus our second number, 34, does that equal 48? No, that does not equal 48. That equals 42, oopsies, which again, we're still too low. All right, now what number should we try next? All right, so now what we're going to do is try 10. So again, 10 
goes in for x here, so we got 18 plus 2 times 10. What does that equal? That equals 20 plus 18. That would equal 38. So let me extend our chart down here. Does 10 plus 38 equal 48? And yes, it does. We're right on the money. So what two numbers is Jonah thinking of? 10 is our first number, and 38 is our second number. 10 and 38, make sure I know that that's your answer by boxing it. Okay, I now flipped over to page 34. Uh, remember, there's seven problems on this page, and uh, one and two, you could use a guess and check table like we have. Um, three, four, and five, you can use really any, any method to solve those, and we've seen problems like those um, this year. This one, number six, is a little bit interesting, so I decided to do this one on the video. It says, um, for exercise six and seven, select the appropriate operation to solve the problem, justify your selection, and solve the problem. So let me just underfy this. Underfy? <laughs> Underline this. Justify your selection and solve the problem. What does justify your selection mean? It means explain why you use that selection and then you're going to solve the problem or solve the problem then explain why. Now you will need to write a sentence for this. A lot of you give us trouble for writing and math but you better get used to it. So here we go. Time. Melissa spent seven and a half minutes of the last hour downloading songs from the internet. What percent of the last hour did she spend downloading songs? Remember, percent means out of a hundred. So we're going to see what percent seven and a half minutes is of 60 minutes because how many minutes are in an hour? Remember, that's 60 minutes. You all should know that. So how do we get this? Well, it's pretty easy. We can say seven and a half. We can rewrite that as 7.5, right? Everyone agree? Okay. Now, we're going to divide seven and a half by 60 minutes, 60 minutes in an hour. Now, what is that equal to? Well, let's do it. We're going to put seven and a half in the little house. We're going to divide, we're going to put in 60 minutes, we're going to divide seven and a half minutes into 60 minutes, and we're going to get our percentage. For now, we're just going to ignore the fact that there's a decimal point here, and we're going to say, okay, how many times does 60 go into 7? Zero times, right? Ooh, that's a little thick. Zero times. Now, how many times does 60 go into 75? Woo! It only goes in one time. One times 60 is 60. And what do we have left over? 15. Now again, we're kind of ignoring the fact that there's a decimal here. We do need to add a zero and bring that zero down. Now how many times does 60 go into 150? 60 goes into 150 two times. Two times 60 is 120. Now again, we subtract, right? and we get 30 left over. All right, again we have to add another zero and bring it down. How many times does 60 go into 300? Well that goes in five times evenly because five times 60 is 300. So we get 300 here, we get zero left, there's no more um, numbers left in our decimal so we're done. Now let's move this decimal up line it up exactly where we left it off and we get one point or sorry excuse me point one two five now you might be thinking okay we have this weird decimal but how do we change that into a percent well there's a little trick that we like to do and once we've divided our two numbers right we've divided 7.5 by 60 we can move this decimal over two places and that gives us our percent. So what is our percent? 12.5. This tells us that Melissa has spent 
12 and a half percent of the last hour downloading songs. So, not only remember did we need to find um, our answer of 12 and a half percent, but we also needed to justify our selection and solve the problem. Oh, we solved the problem. We need to justify our selection. So, what did we use? We used um, division, division to solve our problem. And why did we use division? We used division because we wanted to know per cent, per hundred, or per hour, how many minutes in percent did she um, use up to download her song. So we used division to find percent. Oops. Really? Percent? With an S? Come on now. Percent. And we're done. Now, seven here, it says, Greg helps his mother deliver care baskets to the hospital patients each Saturday. Last Saturday at noon, they had three times as many baskets left to deliver as they had already delivered. If they were delivering a total of 64 baskets that day, how many had they delivered by noon? So, let's make a chart. I'll try again. If they were delivering, this is the total, 64 baskets. This column is going to represent before noon. We'll call it X amount of baskets. This column will represent afternoon. They had three times as many baskets left to deliver. So we're going to say 3X. And what we're doing is we're solving for X, right? Okay, so let's just guess something. Let's say, well, if our total number of baskets is 64, I'm going to go ahead and try 8 because 8 goes into 64 evenly. So I'm going to say they delivered 8 baskets before noon. That means they delivered 3 times 8 baskets afternoon. And I'm going to see if that equals our total of six, 64. So 8, 3 times 8 is 24. So we got 8 plus 24. Nope, that equals 32. But notice that 32 is half of 64. So now I'm going to try 16. So I'm just going to double our number. So 16 baskets before noon. They had to do 3 times 16 baskets after noon. What is 3 times 16? Well, that's 32, 48. Let's see. 18. Yep, 48. So that means 16 plus 48. Does that equal 64? Well, let's see. Let's turn this into our addition problem. Uh, 8 and 4 is 14. Carry that one. Oh, that equals 64 baskets. So let's go back to our question. We know some of our numbers that work. Our question is, if they were delivering a total of 64 baskets that day, how many had they delivered by noon? Well, we know that this X or this column represents how many they delivered before noon. So they had delivered 16 baskets by noon. And how many did they have left? It didn't ask that, but how many did they have left? They still had to deliver 48 baskets. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, now we need to justify. Remember, we need to justify our selection. Well, what did we use? We used multiplication. Multiplication. Why? Because it says right here, three times as many. And we know times is associated with multiply. Multiplication, I should put this in a complete sentence. We use multiplication because of the use, extend this, of the word times in the question. Again, sorry for the sloppy handwriting. It's hard to write with this. 
Okay, so they delivered 16 baskets by noon. There's our answer. The very sloppy, sloppy, sloppy uh, rectangle around it. We use multiplication because of the use of the word times in the question. Times implied multiplication. Okay, so that's the end of 33, or excuse me, 34. Hope this helped. Um, please finish the rest of both sides of this worksheet. And I'll see you tomorrow.